Hi there, Chris from Totally EV, and here we're doing a dedicated audio review of the Peugeot E208. If you'd like a detailed review of the vehicle itself, do check it up on your pop-up banner down in the description below or in the pinned comments. Now, to kick off this review, we're going to talk about its audio configuration. Where you buy, you've got six drivers in total, and there's no option to upgrade. There is four at the front of the cabin, whereby there's two in the A pillars, one in each respectively, and each of the drivers are found in one of the doors. So there's four doors in total, of course. Now, here, the audio drivers can be customized through the EQ found via the infotainment system and here what I've done is enabled the loudness mode, gone on the personalized equalizer, reduced the bass by quite a few notches because the loudness mode basically emphasizes that to low end frequency, increased the mid by one notch and increased the treble by two notches. Of course those are my audio settings so do share yours in the comment section below. Now for you to connect up to the infotainment system there is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay that can be achieved via wireless projection or indeed a USB connection. The USB connection will be preferred in terms of better audio playback. Of course you've got Bluetooth where the AAC and SBC codecs are supported. Slightly ashamed that the LDAC codec isn't supported like you'd find on the Fiat 500 electric. Now elsewhere I should mention the cabin noise and here I was actually pleasantly surprised. There's very little road noise that creeps in from the tyres and indeed from the wind deflecting off the A pillars. Now at a standstill I recorded 35 dBA while driving at around 20 to 30 miles an hour this increased to around 58 dBA and driving at 40 miles an hour this went up to 60 one dBA. Now if you're going to go at 70 miles an hour this will very much fluctuate between 65 to around 75 dBA. It's quite impressive as well if you were to drop down the windows you get around 10 dBA increase in terms of the noise within the cabin which should be pretty obvious but of course it's very nice to see that the cabin is pretty well insulated. So now we get onto the audio demo and I'm going to be placing the camera and microphone in four separate positions and playing back a song. It's going to be from Priya J. The song name is called Falling. You can hear it for yourself down in the description below or indeed purchase it if you like like it. So I do appreciate an audio demo which is compressed over YouTube using my microphones isn't an ideal way to try out or hear out a system, but it just gives you a small little taster. Now what I'll get onto is my subjective opinion. And first off, we have to talk about that sub-bass response. Now here, the woofer drivers that are found within the doors do an okay job, but there's no competition here with sound systems that provide a dedicated subwoofer in the boot. As such here, there's no surprise that the E208 sub-bass response is somewhat cut short. Now as for the mid-bass, it's a little bit wobbly. I would was expecting just a little bit more control. I'm not sure if it's to do with the lining of the doors and or in terms of how Peugeot have actually EQ'd it. And in my case, I did reduce the EQ by quite a few notches uh, through the infotainment system in order to just get a little bit more control and indeed a little less emphasis, of course, with the loudest mode enabled. Now, as for the mids, they're a little bit recessed and pushed back. And of course, you can EQ this via the mi uh, mids EQ on the infotainment system. Although here I did find that adding anything more than one notch does detract from the overall accuracy of the system and as such is not preferable for those people who want a little bit more of a reference type of sound. So therefore you should just accept that it has a V-shaped sound signature. Now of course here the highs do extend pretty well. I did add two notches to the treble EQ in order to get just that little bit of extra zing and at the front of the cabin given you're treated with two tweeters it makes for quite a likeable experience. Although at the rear it's a little bit lacklustre given you've only got two audio drivers and here they have to deal with the whole frequency range. Now this really does lead me on to the sound stage and here the sound stage is somewhat acceptable. Instrument separation is a little bit lackluster while the overall width and depth is acceptable for a small sized cabin. As such will keep you quite entertained specifically if you're sat at the front of the cabin but again if you're sitting at the rear of the cabin it's just a little bit more disappointing because you've got a limited number of audio drivers. Now what I'm trying to convey over here is that the sound system is neither amazing and neither is it terrible. It kind of sits in a weird middle point. It's nice to see that there's rear speakers integrated which isn't the same 
same that could be said about some of its competitors, namely the VW ID3 or, for example, the Fiat 500 electric if you don't go for a certain trim level. So given the overall performance, I think some consumers will be satisfied. All the audio files will be left disappointed and those people who really do like listening to music might feel there's a little bit of missing tone, specifically when it comes to the sub bass and mid-range frequencies. Now, if you've liked this independent review, definitely do drop a like and, of course, subscribe if you want to see more from the channel and hitting that bell notification will give you a notification through your YouTube inbox when a latest review goes live on the channel. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one. I've been Chris from Totally EV. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.